Welcome to part 2 of this Webflow GSAP tutorial series. Today we will once again be working on our Mars exploration website from the last video where an AI called Nova guides visitors through the red planet. And we will create a page load animation that simulates the system booting up and then with a button click it reveals the main stage of the site behind it. And this will actually be the stage design here. I'm currently working on the layout and we will develop it together in the next video. I have many more cool layouts in the pipeline, so make sure to subscribe to the channel. And now let's go. We later want this box to always scroll within the viewport here in the bottom uh, right part. So we can change this section to a div block element. Or maybe also change the name to fixed wrapper and then we convert it from relative to fixed in all corners and also give the page painting of our presets here in the Nova AI collection, page padding uh, Nova. And now it should scroll within the viewport, but it's not above all the other elements. So we can give it a higher set index and also delete the minimum height. We can leave the overflow clip for now. And that's it for this one. And then the Nova box size, we can change the name here to maybe component. And then for the design of you, we give it the standard um, size of 100% width and height. We can delete the maximum width here and leave everything else. Maybe we also hide the transition for now because we can set this in the uh, GZAP animation later. And the Nova box element should now be 16 rem in the Webflow designer. We can set the box uh, component to flexbox vertically uh, and then bottom. We also don't want any clicks uh, going here to the fixed uh, wrapper element. So we can set this one to if point events none, but the box itself can be clicked. So we can set the events here to auto. Then I can paste in our page load animation content. This one here has a black uh, background color and a bit of inner padding. And then we uh, align the elements inside in the bottom uh, center part here. And inside here, we want a normal custom element for our button. So because this is not linking to any other place, it's just triggering an animation. So we can change the tag to button. This one is from type button. We can give it an aria label of start exploring. And this is actually also the same text we can insert here as a normal uh, text element. And then we give this also our own attribute so we can trigger the click of an attribute later in the GSAP animation. Let's uh, move this one also out of the component, but it's still in our fixed wrapper element and scrolling with us, which is not what we want. And therefore we can give it a negative margin of minus 100 VH and now it's outside of the viewport but it's still there but it's no longer in in the basically in the Webflow designer. But if you want to change the content you have to delete the negative margin, add some stuff and then move it back outside of the viewport. And now we have to reset this step in the page load animation. So we can add a new page load animation. This will be a custom one and then let's choose the page load animation content this will be the first element we can uh, trigger here. And then we give it a uh, Y percent of 100%. And this should be like a initial state reset. So we can give this a duration of zero. And we also don't want to have a transition. And then we want the Nova box component here to be also have an initial state of uh, zero duration. Then here, this is the component, Nova box component. And this one should have a size. So we can delete those, give it a width and height. And now it should go to 22 rem maybe. And then we can, it's like an initial state for all the, for all the elements. And I haven't figured out another way to reset this like in the old uh, in the interactions. And then we want the uh, Nova box to adapt the size of the component here. So we can also duplicate this one and give it another class of our Nova box. And this one is now 100% uh, width and height. We also want the Nova box component to fade in. So let's duplicate this one, not width and height, but an opacity from zero to 100%. And you now see that even if we are set this one to opacity zero, it's still visible here. So I don't know why that is, but maybe we can just in case give this one also an opacity here of 
zero. And this one should happen later. So let's give it a delay of one second for now. And then we can start by presenting our preload text. So let's double click here in the timeline, bring this one to the top, give it a proper name. This one should now be the, the class page load text. This can happen maybe in 1.8 seconds to go with the opacity from maybe 20% to 100%. So we can repeat this back and forth two times. So let's see if this is working. Yeah, but maybe the power should be in and out. So it's a little bit smoother. And then at the end, we can duplicate this one again without and repeat. And then it should just get uh, go from 100% to zero. And we can overlap this a bit. And I think the loading text can be pulsing about one second and then the Nova component box should appear. But this can take about two seconds. So it's slowly animating in with a uh, power in out. And then we don't want a glow in the background. So we can also go to the um, Nova box. I think it's here. Then integrate uh, another one here. This one is the Nova wrapper element. We can use the opacity here from zero to 100%. And then at around one seconds, we only see the box element. And then at around 1.6 seconds, we can fade in the eyes. So let's double click here, give this uh, Nova eyes a blinking name. And we also want this one to go from opacity zero to 100%. And this one should only affect the Nova eye, so all matching elements. So we have two eyes here. And this should also repeat two times. So let's see if this is coming up. No, uh, maybe because we actually set the Nova wrapper element here to fade out. Yeah, we can move the eyes outside of the wrapper element or we change this plasma to affect only the component, the Nova plasma component. I think this is a better solution. So let's change the target class here. And now we should see the eyes. And then at the start, they should directly blink one time. So we change the height from zero to 100%. We wake up the AI and then it should be a little bit confused and blink three times. And then we want the text to appear. Let's double click, give it a name of Nova box text. And this should affect only the child elements of the Nova box bottom. And we can set the scope here to children. And this is a really cool feature from this new GSAP animation here. We also want the opacity go from zero to 100% and stagger the the elements or the, the, the letters with 50 milliseconds in between. And then we can split it by maybe by word, by letter, by letter. I think this looks better. Nice. And then maybe 1.1 and a delay of 2.4. So it's after the eyes are coming up, then the text is fading in. But we can see that the loading text here is basically gone and then the other text is fading in. I think we can loop this one one time more. So we'll set this one to free and then fade out the loading text after this. Yeah, this is better for, from the timing perspective. And then we change this one to go from where it is to uh, zero. So it's where it is and then, yeah, we can overlap this a bit. And we also don't wanna see the, the button element here at the beginning, so we can add another action and then we target the page load button wrapper element here. And then we move this one in Y direction, also change the opacity to zero, then back to 100 and back to the zero RAM. Maybe you, we use an expo out here as an animation and then this should go um, around one second. And then we duplicate the box component action. And this one is now affecting the size of the of the box. And then it should go to 45% and then maybe 55 in height. So let's see if this is working. No, because of the opacity. So let's bring this back to 100%. 
and it doesn't seem to change the height, but this is actually because I zoomed in three times here for you for the tutorial, but actually it's changing the height as well later. We can use the power three in out. So it's happening a bit faster and we actually, because of the box component fade in here, we have to set the initial opacity here to 100%. It's already visible. It's just changing the size, yeah. And let's also fade in the, the noise layer here inside of the Nova box. This will affect the Nova box noise. And then it will appear here together with the plasma gradients. And as you can see here that we have a bit of a spacing problem with the loading text. It could happen that it's going inside of the box and that's what we want to prevent. So let's uh, jump outside of the animation, go to the page load animation content, bring it back. And then we can maybe just set the load button wrapper element here uh, to a position of absolute. And then the loading text is now behind the button element, which gives it a bit more space. But I think this is okay for now. So let's check it out. It's animating the plasma in, start exploding, it's coming up. And now we want to trigger the start animation. And therefore we can uh, copy our previously created data page load animation attribute and then integrate or create a new click interaction. This will be our page load animation button. The trigger should be not a class, but an attribute with this name and the value of button. And then as a first step, we want to bring down the page load animation content, which is actually already in the viewport, but we can also reset this here in this interaction so that we can see what's happening. So we add a new action with the class of our page load animation content, then add a Y coordinates here. And as an initial state, this should be 100%. So we, we have it in a viewport and then it's animating them out of the viewport to minus 100% maybe in 1.1 seconds, maybe with a power um, free in out. Now, if we click the element, the whole content is going outside. And at the same time, we want the Nova box to go from the center to the bottom area. And therefore we have to target the Nova box component. And this one should go in width and height from where, where it is in the page load animation to 100%. So it fills the whole parent fixed wrapper element. And because it has the Flexbox uh, bottom right settings, it will position the Nova box back to the bottom right. And this should happen um, directly. Then we can duplicate this element. We name this one size. This should target the Nova box. And this one should now go to about the size where it is here. Yeah, I think this is 17 RAM. Let's also set the duration to one second. The same goes here to the wrapper element. And in this case, we have to imagine that the box element goes from the center to the bottom right. Um, but uh, if we trigger a page preview here, then we see that after we click the button element, the box should go or move from here to the bottom right. Well done. And if you want to learn more about Webflow, you can invest in my new Webflow expert course where we build many cool and advanced layouts for clients.